All right, in this final video on trig substitution, we want to take a, take a look at some tr strange cases, some non-standard cases. And I have uh, what makes them non-standard. I have that pointed out on each slide. We're going to do two examples, hopefully in the 10 minute time frame. Here's the first question. Example five, it's, it's different because the x squared has a coefficient on it that's not a one. And it causes some complications. You still do trig sub, but it isn't going to be the standard trig sub. We have to do some algebra first to attack this. Basically, for trig sub, we need that coefficient to be a 1, so algebraically we make it happen. We factor out a 25 from underneath the root there, uh, from, from the polynomial that's underneath the root. Now, both parts don't have a factor of 25 in it, but you can still factor it out, and you just have to put a 25 underneath the 9. Okay. And then that's in good format. We'll break up the square root. Take the square root of 25 and take the square root of the parentheses. And conveniently, I've placed the 5 up top so those guys can cancel. And so now we're at a place where we could actually do um, a trick sub. Which trick sub, though? What format is this? We have x squared minus a squared. Uh, what would be the value of a? So these are all some strange things that happen simply by putting a non-1 coefficient on x squared. Okay. This is type 3 where you let x equal a secant theta. Okay. Um, x squared minus a squared is in that format. Uh, the value of a is the square root of 9 over 25 or 3 fifths. Okay. Let x equal 3 fifths secant theta. I don't have the steps in the, uh, the, the pre- sort of it isn't uh, set up the same way as those other examples were but but we can just make our way through this if x is equal to 3 fifths secant theta we can solve for dx and we can solve for the radical dx is going to be 3 fifths secant theta tan theta d theta the derivative of secant theta is there uh, remember now the radical when you let x equal a secant theta the radical is a tan theta and we're assuming once again here i guess that x's are bigger than 3 fifths Although it doesn't say it on there. Okay, um, so 3 fifths tan theta is what the radical becomes. If you want to work it out, you definitely can. You don't have to, though. A tan theta is what the radical becomes when you let x equal a sec theta. If you've chosen the correct tricks up. So we put these guys back in in step two, and we cancel. And we just have the integral of secant theta. Now, this integral is, is actually kind of tough. It, it should be something that you have readily available to you. It's not something that you can think through on the fly. Um, there's some clever version of one you have to multiply to get this one. And so um, just have it on the ready that the function that has secant as its derivative, the antiderivative of secant is the natural log of the absolute value of the secant of x plus the tangent of x. In our case, the natural log of the secant of theta plus tan theta. It's an indefinite integral, so plus c, but it's wrong. It's in a wrong variable. We need it in terms of x. The question came to us in terms of x. We already know what secant theta is. Um, from our trig sub, we can see that secant theta, isolating it, would give us 5x over 3. So we can replace that guy, 5x over 3. Um, when it comes to tan theta, we can use the reference triangle for that. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So it'll be hypotenuse over adjacent. The 5x will be the hypotenuse. The 3 will be the adjacent. The missing side then is the 25x squared minus 9. But that Rand theorem can get that for you. So what's the tangent of theta going to be? Opposite over adjacent. So the radical 25x squared minus 9 over 3. And then you're done. You got it in the right variable. That is the antiderivative of that function. So if there's a coefficient in front of the x squared, you have to factor it out. Okay. All right. Great. Um, uh, example six here. What's different about this one? Um, the, the, there's no, there's the, uh, the, it needs to be completed. The square needs to be completed. Uh, we don't have a perfect square, uh, a sum of squares or a difference of squares. We don't have the standard form. Once we complete the square, we can have that though. It's not going to be an easy algebra task, but we could do it. 4x minus x squared. Um, is is what we have as our um, what's underneath the radical 
I highlighted the X because if that wasn't there, then it'd be a standard question. But with the X there, it's non-standard. Um, to complete the square, we want to have the squared term first. So we just rearrange them. That's fine. It's a plus. Negative X squared plus the 4X. And then we want to factor out. We want that coefficient on X squared to be to be 1. So we factor out a negative 1. We add a blank space because we're going to then put something in that would make a perfect square there and then do the opposite to it afterwards so we can keep everything balanced. What's in the parentheses is a perfect square if there was a 4 underneath uh, where the underlying part is. Um, you take half of the coefficient on X and you square it. So that's a 4. But really, is it a 4? It's actually a negative 4 because the negative that we factored out so to counterbalance that taking away 4, we go and add 4. And so the completing of the square, 4x, uh, 4x minus x squared, is the same thing as, let's write it in the standard form where the first term is positive, 4 minus the quantity of x minus 2 squared. And so now that's our denominator underneath the radical. Same bounds of integration. And we're... we're we can we can do a, um, a substitution on this. The x minus two is just a, a left. I'm sorry, a right shift of of the function. So we can just let u be x minus two, and then we'd have a standard looking a squared minus x squared there. Um, with this substitution though, and then another substitution to come, we should we should do a, a limit switch. Uh, well, du is just going to be dx with that substitution. Upper limit is x equals two. You plug that in, you'll see u is zero. Lower limit is x equals 1. You plug that in, you'll see that u is negative 1. So those are your new upper and lower limits. And now it's a standard kind of a trig sub. Um, I'm going to show you on the next slide. You don't have to actually do a trig sub here, but let's go ahead and do it. Um, let x equal, this is of the format a squared minus x squared. So a tan, uh, sorry, a sine theta is the trig sub with a is 2. And uh, du is 2 cosine theta d theta. The radical is 2 cosine theta, and they're on top of each other. The red on top of the blue, so they're going to cancel each other out. Let's do another limit switch. Um, if u is equal to 0, what angle gives you the sine ended up being 0 of it? It's 0. And then if u is equal to one, a negative 1, then what angle gives you the, when you plug it into sine, you get a negative 1 half. Be careful. That's in the fourth quadrant. And you have to use the negative version of those angles. It's negative pi over 6. So you can just plug these guys into your, as your bounds. Cancel and get the antiderivative. But it, everything cancels out. It's just theta is the antiderivative. You put in 0. You put in minus pi over 6. Upper minus lower. You get pi over 6 for the answer. Okay. So I went through kind of fast. So I just want you to see that there's some subtle differences from the standard trig sub question that cause some complications. Um, this integral that we just did, we didn't have to do a trig sub on. The way it came out, it was basically it's, it's arc sine of, uh, of x over two. And so you should have on the ready these useful integrals that actually don't require trig sub. Uh, we could have done that shift as well. We could have just automatically said that the antiderivative of that other one with the x's in it would have been the arc sine of, um, what was it for us? x minus 2, the arc sine of x minus 2 over 2. And we could have gotten it right away and, and skipped all the trig sub and the u sub. Okay, on the bottom there are some arc tans there. But just know that um, if, if, you, uh, if you see something of this form, you can abandon trig sub. But you can just do it this simpler, simpler integral here. Uh, these guys just come from u sub. Okay, all right, great. This is the end of the trig sub videos. I think there was about seven or eight of them. But... By going through these videos, you've gotten a thorough investigation of what the technique is. And hopefully you can now go launch out on your own and do a bunch of problems with this technique. I think it's one of the most difficult in the class, um, one, of, one of the most difficult sections. But if you spend some time with it, it's something that you can master. The issue is putting in the time for it, as is always. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. Uh, thank you for watching. All right. Take care.